collection of officers for the 2021 year. Uh, how does it move the board? Uh, Mr. President, I would uh, like to nominate you as president for this year. I'll second that motion. Okay, we do have a motion and a second. Uh, a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 I will abstain. Motion passes. Uh, we now move on to the election of a vice president for the board for the 2021 year. I would like to nominate uh, Ms. Virginia Keating for vice president this year. I will second that motion. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 And... We will now move on to the approval of minutes of the Zoom meeting that took place on December 21st, 2020. Mr. President, I will make a move that we approve the minutes of the regular Zoom meeting of December 21st, 2020. And I'll second that motion. We have a motion and we have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Next on the agenda, approval to post nominations. Joe Zervis, Vice President of Michigan City Firefighters Association, Local 475, is requesting approval to post nominations at each fire station for the Fire Merit Commission starting Monday, January 4th, 2021, and ending on Monday, January 18th, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve the posting of the nominations for the Fire Merit Commission. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, uh, Mr. We'll President, if I may, if yes. I may real quick. Um, when we did the last uh, nominations, we spelled out as a board that any firefighter wishing to make a nomination uh, should submit, submit a written nomination to the clerk's office so that we had a paper trail. I'll over there if I listen to a meeting, okay? okay? Just want to clarify that. Okay. Um, I, would, I would move to add that requirement <laughs> to the motion that we just approved. And it has to be posted oh. at each station, correct? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, we do have a motion and a second to amend the uh, motion to require the submission of a written uh, application for nomination. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion and amendment passes. Uh, we will move on to the claims docket for January 4th, 2021, which does list municipal claims in the amount of $2,704,756.99, community development block grant money of $45,108.24, Health Life, $702,820.99, and Workers Comp in the amount of $10,600 for a total of $3,463,286.22. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve the claims as stated, totaling $3,463,000. $286.22. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, now move on to the payroll docket of December 18th, 2020, uh, listing a city payroll of $1,148,000. I make the motion to approve the city payroll in the sum of one million one hundred forty-eight thousand eight hundred sixty dollars and twenty-eight cents. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, we now move on to the unfinished business pending items uh, list. Uh, the first item on the agenda, which uh, we've actually listed, will be revisited at the January 18th, 2021 meeting. Uh, involves Paul Przybunski, councilman, concern over old hanging poles, wires that belong to NIPSCO or Comcast that need uh, to be removed from city right of way. Again, Mayor Perry has been in contact with uh, city engineer Jeff Wright, and we will be dealing with this uh, at the January 18th meeting of the Board of Works. Mr. Uh, President? Mr. President, yes. if I may, I, I believe Mr. Wright is in uh, attendance at the meeting. I, I, I think that's JWRIG. If he would unmute, uh, maybe Jeff can give us uh, uh, some additional, shed some additional light on this. <clears throat> so Jeff, I think I, everybody's uh, familiar with what I've sent already, copies of emails and memos to NIPSCO, Comcast, a couple of the other utilities that have wires and redundant poles. Uh, having heard no response back, I talked to the mayor about it, and uh, I've pretty much exhausted the limits of what I can do as the city engineer. I can't hire a contractor to go out and take the poles out, take the wires down. That has to be done by the utilities. The, uh, I don't have any ammunition in my uh, disposal to use to force them or try to force them to, to take the utility, uh, the redundant poles out. So uh, that's my report. <laughs> that's my update. I have done everything that I can short of not issuing any more permits to NIPSCO, Comcast, or the other utilities until that work is completed. That could be an option, but I see that as a failing option as every business that needs internet, electricity, or any other kind of service from a utility would be screaming at the mayor and the council and everything else. That's a, I'm sorry, that's a losing battle. So all I can say is I've exhausted everything that I have at my disposal and so I have to put it in the hands of either the Board of Works or the council or the attorney's office. Somebody higher up the chain in government needs, needs to take this on other than myself. And I'm willing and ready to execute any plan that uh, the higher up chain uh, comes up with. So uh, taken at this point, it's in uh, your hands, the council's hands, the attorney's hands. Jeff, have you got a list of uh, of these polls and who uh, owns them by any chance? I don't have a definitive list of each poll. They're scattered throughout the, the city. There's multiple utilities. I think everybody knows who the big players are. You know, Comcast, Frontier, AT&T, all the, anybody that owns a wire of any kind that's aerial. Um, in terms of being responsive to your request, I can put that on a memo and say that these are the utilities that have uh, redundant poles. And I could suggest a couple of locations of where those poles out are at, uh, but they're scattered across the city. Uh, it's something that I think Councilman Prez Belinsky is correct, needs to be addressed. If it isn't addressed, it's just going to get worse. And uh, we just completed the York Street project. It's a beautiful project. Looks really good. Turned out kind of nice. But when you look towards the right of way, there's poles, sometimes two, sometimes a cluster of three, all grouped together with redundant. Some of them don't even have wires on them. It's an eyesore. It's bad. It's a bad look bad for the community, needs to be addressed. Well, if I may uh, speak with the with the uh, holiday being over the holidays, um, Jeff, if you have, do you have telephone numbers for 
the suspects? I can track those down, yes, sir. Well, then I will make calls today to every one of them. We're going to bump this thing off a dime and get, get something going here. Okay, uh, with that, we'll move on to our next item on the unfinished business list. Uh, James Taylor requesting roadway access on Huron Avenue. Um, he would also like a street light installed. Uh, on December 21st, the clerk's office sent James Taylor a letter stating that he needs to get in contact with city engineer Jeff Wright before being able to put in a roadway access. Uh, does Mr. Wright have any information regarding this request? I don't have any new information. <clears throat> I just have what I've sent uh, prior to the board in memo email form. It's more than just a driveway access. To develop that property requires utilities, both water and sewer. Um, I don't think the city has any issues putting in or uh, creating some kind of an access back in there, depending on funds. We wanna see where the funds are at before we do that, which is gonna be April, May at the earliest time frame. I think the developer needs to look at uh, the cost of installing the utilities and with and if that's within uh, uh, their finances. And that's what we need to know. We need a commitment and almost all the way up through installing the utilities before, before we spend the money to build the road down through there for them. So uh, they need to absorb that cost, take that on. They need to contact the sanitary, the water district um, and we can, we'll entertain taking on, uh, you know, the design and, uh, you know, even the installation. The city has an interest of developing that sex, little section of road. There's lots back in there that can be developed and used, and uh, plus all the benefits associated with that. So the city has an interest in creating the road. However, before we do that, the utilities have to be installed, and that has to be borne by the developer. Okay, so we do have a note on the list that says we should revisit this uh, on the, at the January 18th meeting. Is there any need to revisit it at the January 18th meeting, or is this something that we should be, uh, you know, keeping it on the list, however, moving it into the April, May area when we will know more about the availability of funds? Yes, Mr. President, I make a motion that we... Uh, we amend this to uh, revisit it our uh, first meeting in April. Second that motion. We do have a motion and we do have a second to revisit this at the first April meeting regarding Mr. Taylor. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Ms. Keating? I said I. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I did not hear, I apologize. Okay, uh, motion passes. Okay, we move on to uh, Ms. Cora Cambridge, uh, a NIPSCO light pole that uh, we did approve at the last meeting, and we are leaving that uh, item on the list until it is completed. Uh, we'll move on to the next item. <coughs> Pamela Utterback, representing the Shortland Hills Property Owners Association, 203 Maplewood Trail, is requesting paving in the Shoreland Hills subdivision. Uh, we are going to revisit this at the first meeting in March, as uh, stated by Mayor Perry at a December meeting. Um, the next item, John Shalikian of 609 Franklin Street, uh, no access to property and drainage issues. We did table this until the first meeting of March 2021 due to uh, not having money in the budget at this time. And move on to the final item. 
uh, which was brought to us at the previous meeting by Councilman Don Przblinski, 215 Gardena Street, requesting an audit on the ADA accessible crossings on Franklin Street. I believe Mayor Perry has some uh, information regarding this. No, unfortunately, Mr. President, this time I do not. Uh, but the how it, it sounds like someone would like to add something to that. Yeah, I, we have a letter from uh, our city engineer regarding this matter. Uh, Jeff, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, Why don't you? That? We also had a letter from you regarding the uh, the paving issue that we had talked about previously too. You might want to address that, Jeff. Okay, so uh, for the ADA push buttons. Uh, we have a maintenance contract with uh, Midwest Electric, and uh, I just went ahead and directed them to proceed with the audit along Franklin Street from US 20 up to, uh, I think it's four, if not uh, number two, Second Street. Uh, and as, uh, as they proceed with that audit, they're just going to go ahead and fix them. There are uh, ADA push buttons for, uh, there's an audible uh, signal uh, that needs to be uh, addressed or part of that package. And so I just directed them to go ahead and proceed and go ahead and get it done. Subsequent to that, I did receive a phone call from uh, uh, Don, uh, Councilman Prince Politsky, and uh, he was wanting a citywide audit of all of the ADA push buttons that uh, I left, uh, I just left it with Miss Midwest Electric the way we had discussed, let's get Franklin Street done. Uh, I didn't wanna just authorize them to go do the whole city. <laughs> that might be a price tag beyond our ability to pay in a, in a fiscal year. You know, I don't know what that's gonna cost, uh, but they're gonna do address the Franklin Street for sure They'll come back with a list of the ones that were repaired and they'll come back with a cost that will give us an idea of how we budget to proceed for the for the rest of but they do need to be addressed absolutely i agree with mr wright's assessment i would say we we take this a bite at a time i appreciate uh councilman prisblinski's vigor in this but uh uh when we get the report on the Franklin Street ADA crossings uh, will probably not only get an estimated cost to do repairs, but also a, co uh, a cost for the audit. And we can take that cost and extend it over the city and find out where our pain threshold is at. So I would uh, I would agree with Mr. Wright 100%. So uh, what I am gathering is we just need to leave this uh, matter on the uh, unfinished business list and we will take it on a meeting by meeting basis uh, as information is collected next on the agenda is public comments is there anyone in attendance that uh, wishes to address the board with none being heard do any members of the board have comments they would like to make at this time they have none None here, Mr. President. Okay, I also have no uh, comments. Um, I believe that we are at the end of the road, and I would look for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Support. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Everybody, we did the first meeting of 2021. Everybody have a great new year. Amen. Happy new year, everybody. You as well. Happy new year. Thank yeah. you.